What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nights like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, our sponsor is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. It's run by myself, co-founder John Corcoran's application only. Check out rise25.com. Today, Michael Lovich also has a groundbreaking event which we're going to talk about. We have Michael Lovich who went from founding the Hypnosis Network to co-founder of Real Dose Nutrition that has had over 360,000 customers to co-founder of Baby Bathwater Institute. Our mutual friend David Gonzalez introduced us and said, Michael has been a friend for many years. He started a seven-figure publishing company, eight-figure nutritional supplement company. More importantly, the time and care that he and Hollis put into the baby bathwater event is absolutely nuts. Michael, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So how do you decide what to what type of product you're going to sell? Well, for, for, that, that, for that company... Um, because we had done so well with weight loss, like my the hypnosis program we had was ah. huge. And then all our affiliates, so I had a huge list and following in that with the high integrity. That's the thing, that's what happened. I had this huge list of people who wanted weight loss and all these supplement companies came to me wanting me to endorse them. Mm. I was a doctor in physiology and I'd ask her, I was like, well, you know, I didn't know a lot, a lot about supplements. So I asked my mom to review them. She goes, this, she was the one who told me how much crap this was. And I couldn't endorse any of them. So I really created that so I could have something I could recommend. So I wanted to went there. We wanted to create. A, I wanted to create a product that I could feel good about, and then market it um, appropriately and not with yeah. a bunch of magic crap. I don't believe in magic or miracles. That's a tough part, probably, about your competitors with their messaging with weight loss, right? Mm-hmm. There's probably people saying a lot of making a lot of claims. I would imagine. Yep, but we killed it because one is we you know, we bought we buy media. That's you know the thing is. I do really well marketing to New York Times readers, so I market to smart people. So nobody was marketing like that, and they could see through that. And we were able to buy media when nobody else was. So all my friends are coming up to me and like, "How are you buying so much?" Because we have spent like forty grand a day. Like, how, how are you able to buy so much on Google? I'm like, "What do you mean? Like, they have no problem with us. I can prove my claims." Why Is that you? why? Because you can back up your claims. Yeah, I had all my white papers. Yeah. So when they would come to me and and say, you know, what I they. Compliance would come out. I said, "No, I can prove everything here." And then I didn't write outrageous copy either. Right. So we won because of that. Because now Facebook's getting really lax. I think they're making a big mistake. Facebook right now is um, very easy for some reason, but it, it, you always see ebbs and tides on the media buying. They'll get hard again. They were hard, but we never had a problem. When everybody else is like trading out cards, they're on, they're off. We were consistent, so we never had to fuck with that. So. The, you grew up in an academic household, I think you said. So what what was it like growing up? Did you was this like very science background or? Well, no. I mean, two professor. I mean, a law teacher. Both of just, them were professors. Yeah. So when you were growing up, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I wanted to be a bartender. You did <laughs> when you were when you were like seven. <laughs> no, not like a junior high. Cause I was, that's when Cheers was on. I wanted to be Sam Eleven. <laughs> Everybody else. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was it. But yeah, in college, though, as I started to get into it, I, that's when I wanted to be a special ed teacher. I wanted to do that. That's interesting. I didn't know that. For some reason, I thought you went into sales and then you went into the hypnosis network. So I didn't realize so yet. I took a couple of years off and I did some high tech like sales through the channel kind of stuff because mm-hmm. I, I can sell complex stuff. Yeah. That was database and key encryption management. Yeah. This is selling to. Chief security officers is really fun. Yeah. So Michael, um, what's the vision right now? I know like in the, when you first started Baby Bathwater, you had a certain vision. What is it now, now that you've done it for almost three years? Um, we're still figuring, I don't think we're big vision guys. Yeah. Um, we're still figuring that out. We're, um, yeah, to make the events better and better, and I think we're going to expand to Europe. Um, we're looking into that, so to throw better 
things and also a vision to make it more of a it's more organized like it's been so grassroots and it's hard like we throw parties and it, and it does well now but to treat it like a business has been a struggle because it didn't start like that so the vision is to make them better and better better and better people and then expand the footprint and then maybe do some publishing down the road because we have so many because i think that nobody yeah. really has kind of there's other cool things too there's other cool masterminds but nobody has that the, they're all a little more insular i don't think people anybody has the kind of diversity and i think if we start to we want to start taking the people who are coming and the people who are sharing and maybe create anthologies and things like that. We thought it'd be kind of cool to yeah. take the people we have and, and, and publish some of their stuff and create yeah, like... Yeah, because you have some rock stars. Yeah, we thought like, you know, maybe have like Letters from the Tub and create Volume 1 and create some books and some stuff like that. And then we do have like a... We have a member... We, we did the membership thing after the last event because people wanted more where we have like an online group. Oh, you do? Okay. We have smaller retreats on the back end. But you can't get into that until you know you it very, very well. It's kind of a one by one by one thing. Mm -hmm. And this was our first year doing that, and it's been really fun. But to make that better, I mean, it's like anything else. There's a lot of bathwater in that. It's the first time I've ever done anything like it, and we wanted to be different and all that jazz, right? So it's been great, but there's been fits and starts. We, so if we're going to continue to do that, um, we have to get better at it. So How many events per year? Do you well, that's because we have our two big Utah ones, which are like the ones we're talking that's about. That's one Eden, Utah. Yeah, which are in, which are invite only or you get referred and then right. or, or apply and then it's hard to get into. But then we have for our members, we have four retreats that fit like 25 people up. It's a summer camp called Gold Lake. Maybe we're in Boulder, 3,500 more feet up. And it's really like retreaty and we have a great time, but that's more of a mastermind. That's where we really get to work. Yeah. And we throw some intensives like with Esther. We have like a intensive with Esther coming up for the founder thing. We have a media buying intensive coming up. Yeah. Those so are like, like real specific of kind of yeah. maybe around a retreat, but you find that people really want this particular topic or it hits home for right. them. And then those are like half price for members, and but they're small. They're little 30 person workshops. Yeah. I mean, it's still not tiny, tiny. I mean, that's, you know, that's, well, that's a, it's intimate. Yeah. I mean, it's intimate, yeah. but it's still, yeah, it's a significant number of people who want to, who want to do it. Right. And then that's more members get first chance at those. I like it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. What have we missed so far we're, from your journey? That. What's that? Yeah, we're working that one out. I mean, that's yeah. the whole thing. It's sure. always, it's always that way though. It's always yeah. a work in process because like you said, you want to cut out the things you don't like and then you want to add things you do. So it's, it will always be like that. I would assume. Right. And we try, I think we added a lot. We like, I remember it's going to do this, this, and this, and, and we're delivering, but it's a lot of work. And we, I don't think we uh, anticipated the amount of, and then we have to deliver because that's who we are. So we're working a lot more than we thought we would because it's a lot harder. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, the, that's the nature of it. What else did we not talk about, about your, your journey that would be interesting? Uh, if there's a lesson or a, a mentor that we didn't talk about that's been influential for you? I don't know. Cause I've just kind of rolled into it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think that's, I guess the, the biggest. Who thing do you is call that, for advice now? <laughs> um, depends on the type of advice. Yeah. I still call like well, Dave Lacani, who's also goes to our event. I call him a lot for. He's more my age, a little older. For I'd say overall narrative. Like if I want to like, what's the narrative on this thing? Because mm -hmm. he's the best narrative guy I've ever met. Yeah. Um, if I'm looking for business advice, I call a guy named John Linton. He's also a member. He's Guy's incredible. Like, yeah, I can't believe he got to our event. And all of a sudden, like, you, he owns like a diamond mine and he does this, and he does that. I'm like, wow. this is crazy. So, because I still don't consider myself a sophisticated business person. So, he's a guy, if I like, have a business thing, we, we call him, you know, for to look to be an adult that way. Because I'm still <laughs> not sophisticated with the paperwork and, and all this kind of jazz. Everyone's a different strengths, I guess. But, um, I have one last question for you, Michael. I really appreciate your time. This has been hugely valuable. I love hearing about this stuff and um, your journey. People should check out babybathwaterinstitute.com. Anywhere else we should point people towards? We have so babybathwater.com. Baby. The institute, that one is our, this event. That's the okay. One that's so babybathwater.com or babybathwaterinstitute.com. Um, so my last question is about, um, you were a hot wings champion. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was actually the funnest thing ever because I, I used to live in Fort Worth, Texas, and they run this Death Pass, a big giant hot sauce thing. It's like it's the Mecca, right? People fly in from all over the world, and they have this contest. And I kept hearing about it on the radio. And I'm like, I don't know. I've Are you a big a, Hot Wings fan or something? 
I like hot wings okay, but I've always been the, the weird guy who can eat hotter things. And I was like, you know, is this real or not? I didn't know whether I was like, you know, is it like, you know, is this real? It's just real? with your friends or are you yeah, really? Uh, yeah. uh, so I just heard on the radio and I was like, I have a good friend, Ryan, and my, my daughter might have been, God, how old she would have been, like three or four. At least go to the show, you know. And then I went there and I was like, I entered the contest. It's like 20 bucks or whatever. And it was like a round. He's like hundreds of people joined this and there's like rounds. Right, so they gave you ten boneless wings, and then you had to beat your table, and then you, you had to the eat, next... basically eat them as like, faster than anyone else. Yes, so they're extremely and hot. they're really hot. Yeah, no bones in them though, which is nice. Yeah, and it ended up, you know, in the, you know, you, there's hundreds and hundreds of people, so you win your table, and then you move on to the next table, and you have a little break. So, yeah, I just got on there and did it, and like my first heat, I just crushed that table. Like I was like, wow, <laughs> and I'm to the next table, and I'm to the next table. So you know, I'm like. And I'm just crushing everybody on my table. Is it always ten wings, or is, do they keep yeah. increasing the number? Okay. It was that big. It was enough where you could, you know, that was, it was all part of it. But then I started like I'd go to the bathroom for breaks, and other guys who were going to go on to the next table, I could see their faces were red and they're sweating. I'm like, and I felt good. Then I called my wife. I'm like, I think I'm gonna fucking win this thing, man. Like, <laughs> she came down and then made it to the last table, and I didn't just win. I won like easily. Really. They were in a struggle. They're struggling because by, that, by time, that time, how many wings have, have you have eaten? At least fifty. I mean, over a period of like six, seven hours. But it's yeah. I just didn't feel the pain, you know. And it was easy. And I actually had beer with my last one. It was just it was great. And they got it one this big screen TV, which I still have at our house. And, and it was kind of fun. Hot wings champion. Hot wings. And then I went. And, yeah. And then I went to my friends. You ever watch Man vs. Food? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, there's one where they put like the hottest pepper ever in a blender. Yeah, he, um, yeah, because he went to this place in Brooklyn and he tried it twice and couldn't do it. So I, and my friend Frank tried? Gino, was like mafia. He's like, you come to New York, I'll pick you up and we'll take you to Brooklyn in a limo and we'll do this thing. And and I went there and they had raised it because some other professional eaters came and, and was able to do it. So they made it hotter. What did they make? Like, what were they having you eat? What was this? I mean, it's hot wings with fucking ghost. Oh, pepper. hot wings with the hottest. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was a lot hotter than the competition, not even close. But I finished it, and I fit it, and I got, I was like the second picture on the wall of the new, hotter one. But then that one, yeah, and then I had to have some dinner with some friends in New York, and I was walking down the escalator to get me my friends, and then I was like, oh, fuck. And I was in fetal position all night, and that was the end of my career. You mean after that? I didn't, yeah, it, might, it just ripped my stomach apart. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so I'm done. No, never, no never more again. hot wings. Well, it wasn't, it was fun when it didn't hurt. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you, you know, you brought up the, your wife and your daughter. I don't know how many kids you have, but how do you balance family with, and that sounds like this is one of the reasons you like this business is because you wanted to be with family. How does that, the, the family fit in? How do you balance the family with all the businesses? Pretty easy. I mean, my, I, we're one and done. So we have one daughter. She's 11 now, going on 12. And yeah, I get to home office for the most part. I might have an office to go to, but I'm always allowed to stay at home. And then my wife doesn't work. And so she's around and she takes care of all the, she takes care of our life, so she takes care of not only the family stuff, she takes care of the finances, so she's in charge of our money, so I don't have to do anything but work, yeah. and I do have time to hang out with my daughter a lot and do stuff, and then maybe bathwater is great, because Piper, my daughter, comes on my events, mm. she hangs around. What does she think about them? Tell, what's her, her take? She loves her? them. She's a, she's a ham. I think she likes, she likes them. She gets to screw around. We make her work a little bit, but I try to make her work, but she acts like she works, but... She's social, and like I, we have really nice friends. And so, like you know, Hollis he just got here. Like he spends a lot of time with her, and a lot of like, especially the women entrepreneurs in our group, they pay a lot of attention to her. And the more time with them, the better. So like, I really like the crowd mm. we have. So she's integrated into our world. Yeah. And then my wife and I go out a lot. We take her out to bars. She's closed down bars with us. So one, and I don't know if you have kids, but one is I, a part. They're younger. A, yeah, they're yeah, two and five. So they're 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 a bit younger. It's like having two dogs. You can take one dog anywhere if it's trained. You can't take two dogs. But you have one kid. It's kind of like that well-trained dog. You can take him everywhere, and she's kind of like that dog in the pickup that gets to go everywhere with me. That makes any sense. So she's what does she? What do you feel she's picked up by being around the women entrepreneurs? I, I would. I have no you idea. I'd see, she's she just kind of express herself more, and, and that is possible. It's interesting because you said you know in one of the. Um, Audios I, I listened to you, you said your mom used to kind of sneak like weed germ and your spaghetti. Like they were in the health and like that coin kind of probably you soaked that up. Right. Yeah, I did. I was taking supplements since I've been born. My mom's one of those freaks. 
Oh, yeah, <laughs> doing that. <laughs> so I'm wondering, like, I'm, I'm just, it's really interesting. Your daughter is probably soaking it all up right now. You know? yeah, I mean, at 11, like, she's in that crazy state. She's hitting puberty and all that. So it's like, you know, who knows what she's, who knows what my daughter thinks now? She's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's funny, but I, I'm not going to, I don't know what, what she, I have no idea. You want to attempt we're, that one. We're having a good time, but you know, right now, who knows? Like, yeah, I mean. Because entrepreneurs wife, do different things. Uh, they're, you know, we're out of the box thinkers, you know? And so my, my daughters aren't 11 yet. So I'm curious of what you do that's a little bit out of the box with her. Um, just to, to affect her thinking or, or what she's doing or nothing. Maybe she's just around your friends and that's. She's more around. I mean, I, I taught her everything early. I mean, I had her doing jujitsu early when she was like three and four. Really? And I, she could ride a bike earlier and I, I take more, phys, I let her take more physical risks than most dads would. Like now it's, when she's a little kid. She was out riding a bike on busy streets with me and just trusted it. So I've I always had her doing things a little yeah. early. Yeah. And she has been out. I mean, she's been part of baby bathwater crazy ass nights. And she's even pulled on nighters where she'll not, I mean, of this, we have, we office in this little mountain home up here and we'll have a lot of people over and people will pull all nighters sometimes, but they're, you know, with aid and she'll stay up till nine. She has that kind of energy. So she gets, yeah. she gets to see the weird. And as far as what I, I push her real hard, she's kind of gifted at math. So I push her real hard in that. We play a lot of numbers games. I don't, I don't do too much. Yeah. You know, I don't, do, I'm not deliberate. I don't have around this, like, yeah. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm not like, no, no. Yeah. It's interesting. Things are going to happen. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. People should check out babybathwater.com. I Absolute appreciate pleasure. It. Thanks. Thank you very much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.